Hey, it's me, Becky Stern, Director of Wearable Electronics here at Adafruit. Today we're looking inside the Shine Activity Monitor by Misfit Wearables. Much like the Fitbit we looked at earlier, it tracks your steps, the amount of physical activity you have, the quality of your sleep, and it also keeps time. The Shine syncs to your iOS device over Bluetooth, and the body of the device is made out of anodized aluminum with 1,500 laser drilled holes for the LEDs to shine out without letting water in. There's also a rubber gasket so you can take it in the shower, take it swimming, and not worry about it getting stuck in the laundry. There's a lot going on in this small package, so let's see what Lady Ada has to say about the design of the circuit. So let's look at the back of the board first, actually, because that's kind of where you would first check it out because it's being detached from the battery. You can see the battery contacts, which are actually just soldered on. Very simple battery contacts. And then over here, these dots, these two by five dots, these are JTAG connectors. So you put them here, you know, so that, you know, when they test and program in the chips, um, they can press the board on from the bottom onto the pogo pins and see all the LEDs light up over here. Now you can see all these cute 0603 white LEDs that surround it, that gives it that cool light effect that you see. And then we've got two main chips here. We've got an EFM32, and uh, this is actually a, a Scilabs chip. It's a microcontroller. Scilabs makes very uh, high quality, low power microcontrollers. It's an ARM32 core. Uh, it's BGA, there's got some sort of uh, water or weatherproofing material around the BGA, maybe something to keep it stable because otherwise it could crack off fairly easily because it's a, a pretty big component. And then over here we've got the CC2541. Almost every other device that we've opened up that does Bluetooth has one of the CC2540s uh, in them. This is the TI uh, 8051 core Bluetooth low energy chips. This handles, this actually has a microcontroller inside of it, um, but for whatever reason, um, even though uh, some devices we've seen uses the microcontroller inside as the main micro, uh, these guys decided to have a separate microcontroller. Maybe they really like the FM32. Maybe they uh, you know, keep the Bluetooth off and they use the low power 32-bit arm. Unclear, uh, you know, everyone's got their own reasons, but since these two take up a lot of space, we're guessing there's a pretty good reason for why they have both of them. And over here, there's that uh, very common accelerometer we see in almost all of these projects that we've taken apart, the uh, list 3 dh which is the ST Micro uh, Triple Axis Accelerometer. Really good, high quality uh, accelerometer, but low cost, uh, which is what people really like about it. It's also really small. So this little guy, there's probably about like 16 plus or minus Gs, triple axis. So that's your motion control. And you got some power management stuff over here. You got some, some big capacitors. You can check these out. And then um, what was really cool about this project is you're thinking, well, this whole thing is made out of metal. And you know, as you probably remember from your physics class, you can't uh, send radio waves through metal. Right, it's, it, it acts as a Faraday cage. Well, if you look over here, we can follow the antenna path. You've got your CC2541, and then over here, this is the ballon. This is the antenna balancer, so that kind of takes care of all the impedance matching for the antenna, but then there's no trace antenna. Instead, if you flip it over, this U3 and L5, this is the antenna. U3 is the antenna. Um, this little uh, ceramic chip antenna, which is over here. And then if you look at the back of the board over here, you'll see that that antenna fits into this little divot right here. This is where the antenna goes. So it has a little bit of a gap from the uh, battery. And then on the back, this is all nice um, metal and it's, it's nicely coated and it's got this etching in it. But this part here that says 12 is actually a plastic insert. So this is a really difficult manufacturing step. What they have to do is they have to uh, put in this epoxy plastic into this metal after they've milled it out. It, you know, it's, it's a difficult step, but that's how you can actually have the antenna function um, even though it's inside what looks like a completely solid metal disc. So that's the, uh, this cute little shine board. It's a nice design, it's so compact. It's very interesting to see uh, what chips people use. Sometimes they go with Nordic chipsets, sometimes with TI chipsets. And uh, we'll take apart more wearables and we'll probably see a lot of these components in those as well. For this and many other teardowns, we used a pair of straight tip tweezers and the Adafruit USB microscope with its articulated stand. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and let us know in the comments about the wearable tech you'd like to see in our next teardown.